Hi, today I would like to talk about uh, using C Sharp and some of the parallel uh, uh, extensions and methods that are available. And uh, one of them particularly I would like to talk about today is the uh, blocking collection and the for reach. So let's get started. I have a, a demo here with a blocking collection and this blocking collection just has a set of integers. And uh, in this, what I'm going to do is I'm calling the constructor with a value of 3, which means that the capacity of this blocking collection is 3. So I'm going to start looking at the classic producer consumer problem and uh, see how we can solve it with blocking collections in parallel. So here I just start a task and in the task, I'm just saying go from a loop from 0 through 5 and uh, to the blocking collection, add an item i. And here it says console.write line up when the item has been added and in the end it just waits for t1.wait. So if I just run this, uh, let's see what happens here. You can see it says add item 0, add item 1, add item 2. It reaches the capacity and then it cannot add any more item and it blocks. That's why it's the name is called the blocking collection. So this is an actually a good example of where a producer is producing something and it cannot, if it has a, a maximum capacity, it cannot go beyond that. So that's good. And let me just pause this for a second. Hi, so I have modified this to uh, work the way you normally would expect. So we have adding items and they have started another task which would be like the consumer task. And in the consumer task, I also have the loop where we basically call the blocking collection and the take the item. And then I just wait for all this, uh, both of these tasks to complete. So let's just uh, compile this and run it. So I have put in a breakpoint uh, where it runs. So you can see it adds item 0 through 1 through 2 and takes out some items in parallel and then it's uh, working as expected. So let's just uh, uh, me show you something else, uh, the parallel for each. So I'm going to enable the parallel for each here. And let me explain to you how the parallel for each loop is working here. So here I have a source of numbers and I just created a number from 0 through 100 and change it to an array so we have a source. So the way the parallel for each works is you can provide the source as the first item which is the numbers here and then the type is uh, the result and in this case we are going to have our total in the long so it's gone to 0. This is for the initialization of the parallel for uh, uh, variable so we initialize it to 0. Then it usually takes three elements, which is uh, j is the loop state variable. j is the, essentially the iterator going from 0 through 100 in this case because we have 100 items. Loop state is something you can examine to see whether you need to break out of the loop or what's going on with the loop. And here we have a subtotal, the running subtotal that uh, we are counting for each of those various iterations. And we are returning the subtotal from this uh, so this is an example of where we have a, a thread local variables being supported and this is called the subtotal that you can a few iterations may return a subtotal. When the final results comes in what we want to do is uh, we use another construct called interlock which basically says you can modify a variable atomically or add to it atomically. So here is our reference the total the total we want to uh, get. And the final result is essentially the subtotal because it's part of your final iteration. It's coming in here and we add it to the total. So each of these uh, loop iterations will add this to the final results and we will get it in the total. That would be the return and in the end I'm just printing out the total is this much. And we have a try and a catch uh, here because if there is an exception in the loop you can come see and there will be an aggregate exception and we can print the value in here. So let me just uh, show you how it runs. Hi, so you can see that the total was calculated correctly, which is 4950, basically 100 times 99 divided by 2. So let me show you how if there was an exception, how you would handle that. So just let's get started. And uh, Hi, so I have made a little change to show you how the exception would work. Uh, and also this would demonstrate that you can also check the loop state. So if it's exceptional, you can write something in there. But basically where I'm saying is if in the iteration the subtotal is greater than 100, we would throw an exception and we expect to come over here in this area. So let me just start this and here you can see uh, it came back and says it was doing all this. The subtotal must have reached 100 
and here you can see the exception is coming in the message which I sent. So that's how you can uh, basically uh, I can I can let it run through and you can see how it can handle the exceptions in a for each loop and we can get the results. So thank you for watching the short screencast. So to summarize, I've shown you how to use blocking collection uh, um, that are bounded so for producer and consumers and also parallel for each to speed up uh, calculations in a in a loop. If you want to know more, you can go to my website and search for various uh, videos on Gaur Associates and it should be pretty good. Thank you for watching this short screencast and you have a great day.